also another thing that I feel um, shaped her life was being controlled by family and religion. Um, being controlled by her parents and being told what to do all the time and what was acceptable and wasn't acceptable and how religion was a huge part of her life and how she was annoyed by it about how everything revolved around it and her decisions and everything and what was acceptable and not acceptable. So I feel like those two big things really affected why she rebelled and how she felt about herself and how she did different things during her adolescent years. Um, when applying the multi-system lens to examine how um, different areas of her life helped or hindered um, to her life and aspirations or opportunities, um, it really came down to three different areas um and that was her family um she looked up to her mother um her mother was her idol um despite the fact that they did not get along very well but um she wanted to become a mother and that was her main goal and she knew that by doing that she needed to make something of herself um despite the fact that she was experimenting with different things in her life um her mother still was the center of being her idol and what she wanted to grow up to be. Um, the church community was all that she knew, so that was a huge influence in her life. Um, when it came down to different aspiration opportunities, um, she did mention how she always wanted to be a mission, a missionary, and you know travel the world and help different people. But you needed money in order to do that. Um, but the church was all that she knew, so that was why that was a big part of um, her multi-system lens. Um, and also her guidance counselor. Um, her guidance counselor in school um, showed her and kind of pushed her to know that, you know, if she wasn't going to pursue going to college, that she needed to have a career in order to make money. Um, and to survive um, and that she just couldn't survive on her paper route that she had since she was 16 that which was supporting her at that time um, so that her guidance counselor kind of pushed her to look into different areas and that's when she leaned more towards secretarial because she knew that it was something that she could do um, so when applying a different theory I chose to do Freud um, Freud had five different stages um, the oral stage which took place um, from birth to 18 months the anal stage which was 18 months to three years um, and the next stage being three to six um, and the next one being six years to puberty and then the final stage being puberty on um, I kind of use this stage because sexuality and what she was doing was a huge part of her development and also being molested by her cousin also was a huge part. So I feel like maybe that she was fixated on a stage and she was using different defense mechanisms in order to cope with that. Um, in our textbook, um, Rogers, um, on page 82, it talks about, um, he says, a person who is fixated would either resolve the conflict or construct a defense mechanism to deal with the conflict. Um, when focusing on that part of Freud's theory, I believe that my grandmother was fixated on a certain stage or maybe even various stages and she was using defense mechanisms to cope with the conflicts and the stage that she was fixated on. Um, I think that some of the defense mechanisms that she was using um, was withdrawal. Um, she was, you know, she was withdrawing to avoid um, painful emotions and situations like her molestation. Um, she didn't want to um, deal with it and she was repressing those feelings and I believe that she turned to the drugs and alcohol in order to cover it up and um, 
she was using denial um, to avoid pretty much everything. She didn't want to deal with the reality of anything. And a lot of that, I feel, played a huge role in her development and not being able to deal with that or tell anybody. Um, she, also, when interviewing, um, she told me that she just recently told somebody about it, about what happened. So she was holding in all of those feelings and was really not willing to deal with it or tell anybody because she was ashamed. Um, so I feel like, you know, she needed to really... She, that part, the molestation in her life, really affected her self-esteem and how she thought about herself. And she was definitely using different defense mechanisms and turning to the alcohol and the promiscuousness and the drugs and smoking pot all the time and going to, going to class high all the time to cope with that. So that's why I picked um, Freud's theory um, to be the one that I use. But there are limitations of, to Freud's theory um, that it is time consuming and that it focuses on the individual, not the other factors. So it doesn't focus on different environmental factors or biological factors or anything like that. So, and it's hard to measure. Um, it's hard to measure um, the progress of it. And, and it's often not applicable to certain client situation and you might have to stretch in order to um, really get to the bottom of it. Um, these are my references that I used, um, but all, overall I just wanted to say that um, I feel like there was a lot of different factors that played into my grandmother's um, adolescent stage and that she did turn out to be a great individual and she still is in my eyes and looking and picking at these different types of things um, really made her self-conscious about it but in reality um, I felt like this was a great opportunity and that her adolescent years were a huge impact on who she is now and that's why I chose to focus on her adolescent years because of the significant events that did happen. So I hope that you all enjoy my oral presentation and that you did learn something from it. Thank you. Have a great day.